Hello, my name is Tina from Victoria Designs and if you like fairy houses, I have the perfect kit for you, the Whimsical Fairy Village Kit. In this kit you'll find the most playful fairy houses and village scenes and all that in a purple, pink and blue color palette. With these printables, the ever-bubbly Katya from Lunar Sun Creations made a tutorial to make an exploding box album. You'll see. Of course, you can also use totally different printables and papers for this project. And with the printables of this kit, you can also make a ton of other crafts. First, Katja will show you a few of the printables and then she will show you what an exploding box album actually is. And then she will show you from A to Z how to make this yourself. The measurements that you need will be shown throughout the video, but if you would like a handy PDF with all the measurements, you can opt in via the link in the description to get it. If you would like to see more of Katja's colorful crafts and tutorials, check out her channel, the link is below. And if you would like to make this amazing project or other crafts with the principles of our Whimsical Fairy Village kit, you can find more information in my Etsy shop, the link is below. And now here's Katja, enjoy! Hello my beautiful crafty friends! Um, I have once again teamed up with Victoria Designs to create a project using some of their beautiful papers. Today I will be working with the Whimsical Fairy Village. So I'm just going to quickly go over uh, some of the papers to show you what we're working with and then I'll go through the materials and then we'll get going. Okay, so I'm just going to do this really quick because there is so many beautiful papers. So I love that they do both um, some vertical options. Love this one, that one's gorgeous. So they do the, sorry, this is the horizontal. So horizontal options and the vertical options. So you have the choice of both. The imagery is just gorgeous. So these are like all the full size images. And then you've got some that can go horizontal or vertical. I love that there's some ones that are a little bit more, you know, not as patterned. So you can use them for your eye to rest. Then we've got the small journaling cards. Now I didn't print out everything. The, the, this whole crafting kit is really quite large. So I only printed out what I thought that I would need. So I didn't print out everything but you certainly can. So there's the small journaling cards. Let's get these out of the way. And then we've got the large journaling cards. There is one other size as well that's just slightly smaller than these. So you can use these and just fold them, like score and fold them down the middle, or you could use the imagery in like a mini album or, or an explosion box. There's just a lot of beautiful imagery and so it's so soft and so whimsical as the name implies. All right, and then we've also got all of the extra bits. So you've got borders, which are super handy. And then some like bookmarks with all the cute little houses on them. And then we've got uh, these little like file folders. There's a few of those. And then we've got some pockets and some little cut aparts that you can use for different things. So there is like such a variety. These are gorgeous and I love that there's like kind of the outline. You know exactly where to cut and it leaves a little border. So a couple pages of those. Then we've got all these little cute word tags like fairy garden and whimsical square and this way to home and all these cute little things. So you can use those for like pull tabs and such. Okay, and then kind of like eight like square imagery. Ugh, there's just there's so much. It's a great it's a great kit. So we are going to make a fantastic project today, and it is going to be an explosion box. Okay, so let me show you what our explosion box, uh, which is our project for today, will look like. So um, it's six by six on the top and then it's seven inches high. So the same on all four sides. Bottom is just plain paper. Okay, but when you take off the lid, boom! boom, boom. <laughs> this is the inside of the lid there. Okay, so uh, in the center is just plain. There is room for you to like put like a present 
in here so you can have like a present inside the present. Um, all right, so they, the top and the bottom mirror each other and the sides mirror each other. So I'll show you the bottom here. So it has a little pull tab so that's magnetized and opens to the side. And then this opens to the side. In the middle here, we've got a waterfall. Okay, like that, and that magnetizes closed. Over here, we've got a couple um, little flaps that go to the left and the right, and this whole thing actually pulls all the way out. Okay, so it kind of tucks in underneath this waterfall here. Okay, and that closes up like that. So the, the top is the same. Okay, it does the does the same thing. The only thing that's different is the like the journaling cards are different, but other than that, everything else is identical. Oops, wrong way. Boop, boop, there we go. Okay, and then the two sides are also the same, so I'll show you one side here. Okay, so one of the little journaling bits and um, some of the cut apart words here. So that lifts up. These go out. That goes down. And then the whole thing goes to the side. And then this is a pocket. Okay, so I'll show you the other side. It is the same. So just got different journaling cards, but I tried to keep them. I really love symmetry. I'm a big fan of symmetry, so I like things that are mirrored. All right, and there we go, and that closes back up. And then to close it, you just kind of take three sides, hook the lid on those three sides, and then bring up the fourth side and just kind of push it down over top of that fourth side. And there you go. Okay, let's make it. Okay, so for materials, you will of course need your paper trimmer. You will need a few magnets. I didn't use too many in this, um, maybe eight or ten disc magnets. Um, you will need some scissors, some wet adhesive, and score tape. A Tyvek envelope. If you can't find Tyvek, you can use like bookbinders tape. Um, in a pinch, you can even use duct tape. Um, just some kind of thin material that is um, like bendable, but not terrible. Like you want it to be fairly rip proof. Okay, so whatever kind of material that is for you. And then we will need a chipboard for the construction of the whole explosion box. So that's one of the main components. You will need your scoreboard and scoring tool and bone folder and a pair of scissors. You will need some cardstock of your choice. I'm using black just because that's what I happen to have. You can use white or craft colored, whatever suits your fancy. Uh, I think I used 15 or 16 sheets of the 8.5 by 11 inch. And then of course you will need your patterned paper, which in this case will be the whimsical fairy village paper. Alright, I'm gonna put all this away and uh, clear off my desk area and we'll get going. Okay, so we are going to start by creating the actual box part. So the bottom of the box will measure five and a half by five and a half inches or 14 by 14 centimeters. You will need four pieces for the sides and they measure five and a half inches by seven inches or 14 centimeters by 17.8 centimeters, four of those. You will need a whole bunch of cardstock strips. So four pieces of cardstock that are two and an eighth by six inches, um, which is 5.4 centimeters by 15.2. You will need eight pieces of cardstock that measure two and an eighth by seven inches, which is 5.4 centimeters by 17.2. Eight centimeters and then you will also need some Tyvek strips you will need eight Tyvek strips 
that measure two inches by five and a half inches, which is five centimeters by 14 centimeters. Okay, and you'll want to put some double-sided tape on the back of all of these Tyvek pieces. Okay, so get all those cut and then we'll move on. Okay, grab your scoreboard and now we are going to score each one of our strips at one inch and one and an eighth inch, which is 2.5 centimeters and 2.8 centimeters. So do that to every single one of your strips. So for both sizes, but the slightly shorter and the longer strips, we're doing the same thing. So we're scoring them on the long, like scoring down on the long side. Okay, once you have completed scoring all of your pieces, you're going to add score tape um, on the back side. So on the, where the raised part of the score line is, you're going to add score tape. Okay, so make sure that you do not um, have any score tape actually touching your score lines. You wanna make sure that there's a little space between the score line and the tape itself. Okay, so we're gonna do that to all of your cardstock pieces. Okay, I'm gonna do it off camera just so you don't have to watch me put score tape on 12 different pieces. Okay, so just put it all on the mountain side or the raised score line side. Okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, so once you have tape on all the back sides of all of your pieces, we are going to miter the corners. So we're just gonna take a little bit off at an angle, um, but not cutting into that little gusset that we've created. Okay, so there's a little space there. I hope you can see that between, so the point goes to the score line, but not into it. Okay, so do that to all 12 of those pieces. It doesn't have to be perfect, just a little bit of an angle. And then we are going to fold and crease every one of these. Okay, we'll get rid of these. Okay, so now take your bone folder and we are going to fold and crease on each one of those score lines, so both score lines on every piece. Okay, so you will be left with something that has a little gap in the center. So we're gonna put these, they will be going around the edges of every single side. Okay, so that's why we have this gap, so that um, it's gonna fit perfectly along the edge of your sides. Okay, so do that to every one of them. Um, I've done most of them off camera because I'm trying to make sure that this tutorial is only about an hour and a half or so, so um, some of the tedious things I will do off camera and just show you a couple examples. Okay, so I've got all, these are all my long ones and then my four shorter ones. Okay, so now we can start actually putting it together. So grab your bottom box part. We're going to take four of the Tyvek strips and if you don't already, get some score tape on the back of them. We're gonna remove the backing from one half, okay? And then um, this is an extra step. You don't have to do this, but I do find that it helps keep everything super, super strong. I'm going to add just a little bit of wet adhesive as well and just kind of smooth it out with my fingers. So I'm gonna do this with each one of them. 
and this just gives it extra hold. And so we're going to put this underneath our box bottom, okay? So just halfway. And we're going to do that on all four sides, just taking off half of the score tape, adding a bit of wet adhesive, smoothing it out just a little bit so we don't get a whole bunch of bumpies, and then putting it underneath the box. Make sure it's straight. I usually have a little piece of paper towel or something handy just so I can wipe off my finger so I don't get glue everywhere else. And if you don't smooth out the glue, it's not the end of the world. I just It's just a habit I've gotten into. It will still work fine if you don't smooth it out. Okay, and then the last one. Okay, so once you've got all four of your Tyvek pieces on your box like that, we are going to take our box sides and we are going to adhere them to these bits of the Tyvek. So remove the rest of the tape backing. Okay, and once again, I'm going to add a little bit of wet adhesive. Okay, and then we're going to take the sides and we're going to adhere them onto the tie back, but we are going to leave a space. So what you can do to make sure you have enough space is place it up against the side of the bottom, like place up against the bottom, and then let it fold down. And see how that creates that space? You need that space so that this can fold up properly without um, getting too tight, like it needs the, it needs that room to be able to move properly. Okay, so we're just going to go around and do that to all four sides. My score tape is arguing with me. Let's go. This is the grumpiest piece of score tape ever. What is happening? There we go. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> I just also like to smooth it out because then it gets into every little, right to the edge. Okay, and then just continue that process. So, I mean, you can just lay it down like this. As long as there is a space, you're good. Okay. All right, and we'll just do the last two sides. Okay, so once those are all adhered, we're gonna take the other four Tyvek strips and we're gonna cover these seams with the Tyvek. Remove all the score tape backing and add some wet adhesive. Smooth it out if you so desire. And I do desire. <laughs> Okay, and then place it down over top of the seam. And that will hide that seam. So we're gonna do that to all four sides. And it does not matter which order you do this in. You can go around whichever way you like. As long as all the seams get covered, that's what matters. Okay, and just a note, if you do not have score tape, you can just use the um, wet adhesive. I just like to use them in conjunction because I'm too impatient to let wet glue dry on its own. When it's with the score tape, the score tape allows things to stick right away and the wet glue provides extra adhesion. Um, so if you are patient, which I am not, then you can go ahead and just use the wet adhesive.
Okay, so now for our long strips, each of these is going to go on all of the long corners or long sides of each one of these. Okay, so all eight of these sides. I'll do a couple with you and then I'll do the rest of them uh, off camera because it's going to take just a little bit. It's very easy but just a little bit time consuming. Okay, so same deal. I'm going to remove the tape backing, add a little bit of wet adhesive, and then put it onto my side piece here. And it should fit perfectly in there. Make sure it's right to the edge. Give it a good press. Okay, and we're going to do that to all of them. And then the short pieces will go on the ends of each one of these, okay? So I'll do one full panel so you see what it looks like and then I will let you do the other ones on your own. Okay, so we're going to do the other side of this one right in there. Make sure it's Nice and snug, it's right at the end. Okay, so make sure that it is snug and right to the end of the chipboard. Okay, and then for the end bits, we will use the four smaller pieces of cardstock. This will go right on the end here. Okay, so just follow those same steps for the other three sides, the two long ones here, and then the shorter one here. Okay, so this is what you should have so far. You've got the makings of a box. <laughs> All right, so we'll set this aside and we will work on the lid. Okay, so the chipboard pieces you'll need for the lid, you'll need the uh, top part, which is 6 by 6 inches, or 15.2 by 15.2 centimeters. And then you will need the four sides, so four pieces that measure 1 and 3 quarter inches by 6 inches, which is 4.4 by 15.2 centimeters. For the cardstock, you will need four pieces that measure 2 and an eighth, by five and a half inches, which is 5.4 by 14 centimeters. So four of those. And then you'll need a whole bunch of little itty bitty pieces. So you'll need four that measure one and a half inches by one and seven eighths inches, which is 3.8 centimeters by 4.7. Don't know if you can read that or not, but you might have to pause the video and or rewind that and hear it again. <laughs> and then four pieces that measure one and a half inches by one and five eighths inches, which is 3.8 by 4.1 centimeters. Okay, and then you will also need some Tyvek pieces. So you will need four pieces um, that measure two inches by six inches, which is five centimeters by 15.2 centimeters and two pieces that measure two inches by 14 inches and that is five centimeters by 35.5 centimeters. Okay now get your scoreboard out and we're going to score all four of the long pieces at one inch and at one and an eighth just like we did the ones for the bottom so that is 2.5 and 2.8 centimeters so do that to all four Okay, 
Now for all of the smaller ones, we will be scoring them at three quarters on the one and a half inch side. Okay, so that is 1.9 centimeters. Okay, so all eight of them on the one and a half inch side at three quarters. So in centimeters, we're scoring at the 2.8 centimeter mark and we're scoring at 1.9. I'm so not used to centimeters, I don't really work in centimeters, so this is uh, definitely something uh, that is different for me. But I hope everything that I'm saying is making sense. <laughs> Okay, so once we've got all of those scored, we can put our scoreboard away. And like we did before, we are going to add score tape to the mountain side of the long ones. So the, on the side with the raised part of the score lines, making sure we leave a little gap between the adhesive and the score lines themselves. Okay, and then on the smaller ones, so the ones that measure one and a half by one and seven eighths, we're going to put the score tape on the mountain side like normal, like we did on the other ones. But for the really small ones, we are going to put the score tape on the valley side, so on the same side as the indent of the score line. Okay, so on the tiny ones, we're going to go on the indented side. Okay, now we're going to start constructing this in the same manner that we did the bottom of the box. So we're going to take our four strips of Tyvek. Um, if you haven't already, put some um, double-sided tape on the back side and we are going to do the same process, removing half of the backing, adding some wet adhesive and putting it under the car uh, chipboard. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around doing that. Okay, so it should look like this so far. And now we're going to remove the tape backing from the rest of it and add some wet adhesive. The only difference here is that you don't need to leave a gap. We can put this right up against the chipboard because this is going to be bending down. It's not going to be bending up, so it's going to be going that way. So we don't need that gap. That was a lot of glue. I didn't need quite that much there. Okay, so this is what it should look like so far. Okay, so now we've got it to this point and we are going to close these, like close them up close them up, um, fold them up, <laughs> and we're going to use the tiny, the smallest little cardstock pieces, and we are going to adhere them into the inside corners. Okay, so um, these do not need to be mitered. We're just going to put a little bit of wet adhesive. We're going to hold two of the corners up and just tuck one of these pieces in there like that. Hold it for a second to make sure it's like adhered. Okay, and then we'll do the next corner. So starting to give some shape to our lid here. OK, 
Okay, and the next one, so get it right into that corner and hold it for a second. I did not hold this one for long enough. Make sure that glue is good and dry. And tuck that right into the corner. Okay, so it should be looking like this. Okay, we'll do this last piece. The tighter these are into the corners, the better this box will, or the lid will fit. Okay, and now we'll take the slightly bigger ones and we will be putting those on the outside bits. Dry fit them first and if it looks like they're a tiny bit too big then just trim a smidge off. Okay so put some adhesive on there. Okay and these are going to go on the outside of the box. Okay, so this is what you should have so far. And then you've got your inner corners as well. Okay, I'm gonna wait and make sure that those are very dry before I continue. So our next step is to use our long Tyvek strips. If you haven't already, put some double-sided tape on the backs of them. And then we're gonna add our wet adhesive. Okay, so hold the box so it's like on its side. We are going to place the Tyvek so it's like halfway along one of the sides and half overhanging. And then we're gonna rotate the box, wrapping the Tyvek around as we go. Okay, so now the Tyvek is like kind of on three sides of the box. And we're gonna push the sides in like this. And then fold this down, just like you'd be wrapping a present. So you've got like these nice folded corners on each end. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same with the other piece of Tyvek on the other side. And if there's any, anyone wondering where you can buy Tyvek, it is very readily available um, on Amazon, on eBay. Uh, most office supply stores have it. So um, there's lots of places that you can find it. It is spelled T-Y-V-E-C. So if you just type that into um, any kind of Google search, Tyvek envelopes, um, you'll find it. Okay, so we're going to do the same with this one. We're going to go along one side and rotate our lid, wrapping this around. It's okay that they don't line up perfectly. We will be covering this with pattern paper. And then this folds in like that. And fold that down like that. Okay, and now just press on everything, make sure everything is nice and snug and secure. And now we can use our um, four chipboard, sorry, four cardstock <laughs> strips to cover these rough edges. So we are going to miter the corners of these, and I have not yet um, folded and creased mine either. So do the same, just a little bit of a miter, not very much and then fold and crease all of them and then we will just like we did for the bottom of the box we will put these on the rough edges to hide them okay i'm just going to quickly um fold and crease all of my score lines on those uh, off camera okay fabulous so once they're all folded and creased we can 
put them onto our box, our lid. All right, so same process as before. Just add in some wet adhesive and just sliding those suckers on there and squeezing tight. And that will hide that rough edge and make it all pretty. And we're almost done making the actual box part. And then we can work on all of our fancy flippity flaps and interactive elements. Okay, and there we go. We have got a lid. So that will just go on here. We'll hold like two or three of them up and kind of hook this on and then bring the last one up and tuck it in. Whoop, whoop. So it will feel like a little bit um, loose right now, but I've designed it that way so that once all the pattern paper and everything is on the outside of the box and the inside of the lid, it will be perfectly snug. Okay, so I'm gonna set all of this aside and we will get our um, interactive elements started. Okay, so when we are looking at our box like this, these are going to be the sides and they are going to be uh, mirroring each other and then the top and the bottom are also going to be mirroring each other. So they're going to be the same design here and here, same design here and here. Okay, so we're going to do the sides first. Okay, so I'm going to give you the measurements of the pieces and you will cut um, everything that I'm telling you, you will cut it out twice because we are mirroring what we're doing here. Okay, so... Your A piece is going to be seven and a half by five and a half inches, which is 19 by 14 centimeters. That's your A. Your B is eight inches by four and a half inches, which is 20.3 centimeters by 11.4 centimeters. You'll need two C pieces, so four in total because we'll be cutting all of these out twice, okay? So for the C pieces, you'll need two that are five and a half by four and one eighth inches, which is 14 by 10.4 centimeters. And then your D piece is seven by five and a half inches, which is 17.7 by 14 centimeters. And then your E piece is three and a quarter by five and five eighths inches which is 8.2 centimeters by 14.3 centimeters. Okay, so get all that cut out and then cut it out a second time. All right, grab your scoreboard. Okay, the A piece, we are going to score at half on the seven and a half inch side. So a half inch is 1.2 centimeters. Okay, so 1.2 centimeters on the long side. Okay, so that's your A piece. Your B piece, we are going to score at half and seven and a half on the eight inch side. Okay, so the long side half and seven and a half. So that is 1.2 centimeters and 19 centimeters. Then we're gonna rotate it a quarter turn in your scoreboard and score again at half. So that's your B piece. Your two C pieces will be scored at half and five eighths on the four and one eighth inch side. So that is, what is that? 1.2 and 1.5, I guess it is, on the short side. So I'll do that to both of them. Just so you have a little gusset there. Okay, your D piece will be scored at half an inch on the five and a half inch side. So that is 1.2 on the 14 centimeter side. 
1.2 centimeters on the 14 inch, 14 centimeter side. Wow, my brain is just not able to do this right now. <laughs> ah, conversion. Okay, <laughs> for your E piece, we're going to score at half an inch and five eighths of an inch on the five and five eighths inch side. So 1.2 and 1.5 on the longer side for centimeters. Okay, so that's all the scoring we need to do. Um, you can rewind that little section to recall the scoring measurements for the other set that you have to do. They'll be the exact same. Then we're gonna mirror them. Okay, so now we are going to add score tape to the half inch sections of each one of those pieces. And you want to make sure again that you are not putting adhesive over that score line. You want to make sure that there is a gap between the score tape and the score line. And once we put our score tape on, we are going to miter all of the corners just a tiny bit. For the one that has three score lines, the B piece, it's going to be a pocket, so you're going to put score tape on all three sides. Okay, now we're going to miter our corners, so we're just going to trim a little bit from the edge of the page. For the corners of this pocket, cut in at an angle until the score line meets, score, score lines meet, and then kind of cut out at an angle. So there's just a little, it's not quite straight across, there's just a little bit of a indent there. Just creates a little bit of a neater fold. And then all the rest of them are very uh, straightforward. Um, just mitering off a little bit of the corner, just not cutting into the score lines. Like there's a gusset, make sure you're not cutting into the gusset. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so now we're gonna fold and crease all of these. Okay, so all of my pieces are folded and creased now, and I've also got the mirror image pieces all done and folded and creased as well. Uh, so we can bring in our box, and we'll start putting our pieces on. Okay, so the A piece is going to go on the far outer edge. Okay, so the outer edge right here on the opposite side is going to go on the outer edge over here. Okay, make sure it's as straight as you can get it. I might actually do them both at the same time and then, um, yeah. It'll make sense as we mirror them. Okay, so on the opposite side, it's going to go on the outer edge. So one, one here, one here. Okay, open these up. Your B piece is going to be a, a pocket right here. So that will be the same for both of them. So I'm removing the uh, score tape backing from the sides and then pushing the bottom down so that it adheres just in the corner. It just kind of creates a, a smoother channel for tags so that there's nothing that is restricting it as it slides in. If the bottom part is underneath the side part. Sometimes they can get caught on this lip here. That's why I do it that way. Okay. 
Okay, so that's going to go down right here. Should fit perfectly. Make sure that it's over far enough that this can still bend up, okay? Because it's a, it's a snug fit, so make sure that there's just enough room for it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now we're going to close the A pieces and the C pieces are going to go on the left and right on top of the A. This outer C piece, it has to be just a tiny bit in from the very, very edge because if it's at the very, very edge, this doesn't open as smoothly so make sure there's like maybe an eighth of an inch gap right here between the very edge of the chipboard and this outer C piece on either side so just bring it in just a tiny tiny bit Okay, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Everything else would be the same. I think there was just the one piece, that A piece is the only thing that is a little bit different. Everything else is the same, I believe. Okay, now we're gonna open up those little flaps there, the C flaps, and we're going to adhere the D piece at the bottom of the A piece. You can put it at the top of the A piece if you prefer to have it uh, like go up instead of down. Your choice. Okay, and then these will close over like that. Okay, so I'm going to do the same over here on this side. You may have to trim the tiniest smidge off this D piece because of that C piece coming in that eighth of an inch so you might you can do it while it's on there though I just I just trimmed like a sliver off of this just so it was really smooth fitting in there okay and then for the last piece we're gonna open up the A okay and then our final piece the E is going to be centered at the top of the base. So feel free to measure this exactly. I'm going to eyeball it because that's just how I usually roll and I'm not overly concerned if it's not absolutely perfect um, but please feel free to do you and if you want to measure it exactly you go for it. Okay, so this is going to fold over all of that, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to do the one on the other side here. I think that looks pretty good to me. Might be a little bit off, but I'm okay with it. The main thing is that you kind of want it to cover part of this seam is is the goal. So my plan is to use one of the um, cut aparts somehow and have it glued onto here with a, a magnet I think is my plan. Um, you can put a magnet going from the back of the A to the pocket. Actually let's do that. 
I mean, it's not absolutely necessary because there will be a magnet on this, but um, I like things to really stay in place. So I'm going to put a lot, tiny piece of score tape over on the far side of the back of the A. I'm going to put two magnets that are magnetized together. I'm going to put another tiny bit of score tape. Okay, and then I'm going to close it up so that it adheres to the pocket. And then I'm just going to put some score tape over those two magnets just to keep them in place. Okay, and then I will somehow add a magnet. In the decorating process, I'll, I'll we'll add a magnet to the front part. So I'm just going to do the same on the other side here. And then we can do the top and the bottom sections. Just like that. Okay, fabulous. So there is the sides done. Now we'll get our pieces for the top and the bottom. Okay, so you'll need one A piece that is six and a quarter by seven inches, and that is 15.8 by 17.7 .7 centimeters. Your B piece is seven and three quarter inches by five and three quarter inches. Uh, you'll need four C pieces and they are five and a quarter by four and a quarter inches or 13.3 by 10.8 centimeters. You will need one D piece that is five and a quarter by five and a quarter inches or 13.3 by 13.3. One D E piece that is six and three quarters by ten and a half inches, which is seventeen point one by twenty six point six, and then two F pieces that measure four and a half by six inches, or eleven point four by fifteen point two centimeters. Okay, so cut all of those out twice because we're going to mirror the top and the bottom, and grab your scoreboard. Okay, so the A piece we are going to score at half, five eighths, and three quarters on the six and a quarter inch side. I'll put the centimeters up on the screen for that. You're going to score the B piece at half and seven and a quarter on the seven and three quarter inch side. And then rotate it a quarter turn and score at half on the five and a quarter inch side. Your C pieces will be scored at half on the four and a quarter inch side. So all four of them. These are going to be making a waterfall. Okay, your D piece is going to be scored at half on one side. There, it's a square, so any side. Your E piece will be scored at five and a quarter on the ten and a half inch side. That's going to be a little booklet. And then the F will be scored at half on the four and a half inch side. Both of the Fs. Okay, now we'll add score tape to the half inch sections. So these are the two F pieces. No score tape required on the E, we're just going to fold it in half. This is the D. All four of the C's here. Okay, and then the B pocket. A 
Also, the B pocket is optional if you don't feel like having another pocket. I know some people aren't big fans of pockets in albums, so if you don't want that one, that's totally fine. Okay, so now we've got our score tape on. We can miter all the corners. There's the A. Uh, the B is just like the other pocket that we did on the sides where we're going in at an angle until they meet and then out at an angle. Okay, and the C's, we can do a couple at a time because they're the same size. Now we're going to fold and crease all of the score lines. So this E piece is just going to be an insert into the pocket. So if you don't do the B pocket, then you won't need that E piece either because that's what it's for. It's for the pocket. Once you're done this, you can follow all those same steps that we just did um, to create another set of these pieces for the opposite um, side. So one of these sets will be for the top and one of them will be for the bottom. They'll both be the same. And then on the A piece where you've got the three score lines, make sure to score all three of them because this is going to fold over everything else so it needs that big gusset to be able to fold over everything okay all right so I'm gonna get my other pieces all prepped and then we can put it together okay so once you have both sets of your pieces all prepared you can bring in your explosion box again and I'll work on the bottom one first or I guess I'll kind of do it in conjunction, but just so you can see. All right, so the A piece is going to go on one side or the other, whichever way you want it to open. You can go this way or that way. I think I'll go right on the bottom one and left on the top one just for, for giggles. Okay, so open that up and now the pocket is going to go down onto the base like that. So that pocket is going to open opposite this piece. Okay, so I'm going to do it on the top, but I'm going to go the other way. So I'm going to put the A piece on the left hand side. Okay, and then the B pocket is going to go on this side, but facing out. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but trust me. Okay, so just put some wet adhesive on that, and then we will put it on opposite your A piece. Okay, with the opening going out. Okay, so the opening is right here. Okay, so now we've got our pocket on and the opening of the pocket is facing that way. <laughs> so facing the edge of the chipboard. And so now we are going to take our C pieces and they are going to become a waterfall onto your B pocket. Okay, so the first one's going to go at the top. Um, and also, just a note to um, periodically kind of close this or like, you know, lift this up to make sure that nothing's too close to the edge or anything. So if it's too close to this fold, it could get crinkled. So um, make sure that you're periodically kind of checking that, that nothing gets too close. 
And if it does, just give a little trim to whatever is too close. Okay, so there's the first one. Might as well, well, I'm going to do the whole waterfall and then I'll do the other one up here. So you can put the next C piece directly below the half inch section of the first, or you could leave just a tiny little gap. I think I'm going to leave just a tiny little gap. Okay, I'll just bring that up so you can kind of see it a bit better. So there is just a little gap here between the bottom of the half inch section of the first one and the second one. Okay, so just a tiny gap is what I'm leaving. I discovered <laughs> upon editing that um, I didn't realize how often I repeat myself. <laughs> I was just about to say again. I'm like, okay, so make sure to leave a tiny gap. I'm like, no, you've you've already said that like five times. I think I think that's good. I think they understand. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just making sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay, perfect. So here's my fourth one going down. Okay, so there's my little waterfall and my D piece is going to go at the bottom of that pocket and cover over the whole waterfall. Okay, so it's going to go at the very bottom of the B piece. And we are going to put a magnet on this one. Okay, so I'm going to put a tiny piece of score tape down here. And two magnets magnetized together. A little more score tape. Okay, and that's going to go up and over the waterfall and then put a little bit of uh, more score tape over top just so, because they're so, they're so strong sometimes they like actually want to like go back together and they lift off the page. Okay, so that is that. And now, in case you're wondering what this one was going to do, so this is our insert, but it is going to insert along the side here, underneath the waterfall. Okay, and it's going to fold like that. That's going to fold like that. We are going to take these E pieces, and they are going to go on the left and the right side of that and then this is going to fold over and magnetize. Um, you could actually do it also on the inside if you prefer. Uh, hmm, do I want it on the inside or the outside? I might do it on the inside. I, I mean it doesn't really matter. You can do it on the inside or the outside of the D piece. <laughs> As long as it can still slide into that pocket, like that sets its only, you know, requirement for where these can go. Okay, so I'm just going to slide this out. I'm going to put these on either side, centered top and bottom. There's just a little bit of space on the top and bottom. Okay, line the other one up. Okay, and I'm going to close this just so I can make sure that I'm lining these up perfectly. Okay, and then this will slide underneath the waterfall. Come here, there we go. Okay, so that, and then I was going to have a magnet going from the back of the A onto the front of this. So, score tape. Okay. All right, I'll close that up. Oh. 
Okay, and then we'll do the exact same process with the waterfall and everything onto uh, the top part. Okay, so it's going to be the same process here. So we'll do our waterfall onto here. So yeah, everything, everything that we did down here, we will do up here. Okay, so um, you can just rewind the video if you need to see it again, or you can just kind of use the bottom part as a reference. And uh, I'm going to get my pieces on, and then I'll be right back to show you our last bits. So now that we've got all of our interactive bits onto our box, we can start adding our pattern paper. So um, to do this, you simply measure the area that you want to cover and then cut a piece of pattern paper that is uh, a quarter of an inch smaller, both horizontally and vertically, so that you get like a nice black border around the edge. Um, so this is the part that will take the most time. Um, so I am going to do quite a bit of it off screen and I'll come back and show you what I've done or if I'm doing anything fancy. Um, but this does take the most time, so um, I don't want this video to be 10 hours long, so I am going to do some of it off screen. So I'm going to do that and get all my pieces organized and ready and and then I will come back to you and show you what's going on. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go over this really slowly so that if you do want to do exactly what I'm doing with the pattern paper, you can. All right, so I've got one of the junk journal kind of papers here, the one with the bridge. Um, I did uh, glue on just a little pull tab, a little metal pull tab. I think I got these from uh, Amazon. I just punched in ring pull and that's what came up. Uh, okay, and then on the inside I've got another one of the journaling cards and then this purple um, kind of fern pattern. And then open that up and I've got some uh, of the mushrooms and then I did leave each one of the parts I kind of left some open um, so that I could put them on with you. Okay, and um, I am inking all of my pieces with very, very old vintage photo distress ink. Um, this is optional. I just like the way that it looks, so feel free to do that or not. So I just kind of take my dauber and just go along the edge like that, just to give it a little bit of an edging. I just prefer that than seeing the white core of the paper, but completely up to you. Okay, and then I'm just leaving this white in the center here. So that's that. And then over here I've got one of the um, smaller little journaling cards and it's uh, glued onto this part and the magnets up here. And then I've just got the purple down here with the waterfall. And the waterfall I just did the little tiny strips in between and at the bottom. And then uh, a little bit of paper piecing down there with the lanterns. Okay, so I just wanted it to look like one full sheet like this, but I didn't want to use all the paper, so it's just black for photos. Uh, and then this pulls out and just white over here and white on the back. Okay, and then that goes back in. And that closes up like that. Okay, so I'm going to do the top part. I think there's still some parts on the top part that I have not done. Okay, so what do we need here? So we've got this piece is going to go right there, so I'll just quickly ink it up. And now, um, this is the little tiny journaling card that I decided to use 
for on this one. So I'm going to put um, adhesive about two thirds of the way down. So starting around there. <laughs> well, that was a little excessive, can't you? <laughs> Sure, we don't have any overhanging adhesive. Well, a little cray cray and off the rails on that one. Okay, perfect. And now we can stick that down here, centered left to right. That looks pretty good, I think. Might be a tiny bit, yeah, it's a tiny bit crooked. Can I get it back up to switch it? I don't know. Oh, no, I don't think so. I think it's down. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Okay, now in this tiny little bit right here, I'm just going to put some of this mushroom paper. So this needs to be uh, two and five eighths by just shy of an inch. Okay, so I'll put this down here. Now you certainly do not have to do what it is that I'm doing. Um, the this is the you know the fun creative part of everything. Um, adding the pattern paper. This is where you can kind of like you know turn it into your own kind of thing, right? Because everyone has a different way of adding the pattern paper. That's part of why I don't show me adding all the pattern paper because. Uh, a lot of people like tons of paper piecing. Some people don't like it at all. Like some people like different color combinations. So this way, you know, you can see what I've done and certainly you can do exactly as I've done if you so desire. But um, I encourage you to, you know, make it your own and, and uh, use the, like there's so many pieces of pattern paper in this kit. So you can definitely, do some really creative things with it for sure. Okay, so this piece, um, I wanted to use it, but it just wasn't quite big enough. So I'm just using some um, kind of borders of just some paper that I had in my stash. Okay, and then that's that. And then, so that's good like that. I think I've got everything else done. Yep, that's good there, that's good there. There we go. Okay, so now on to these ones. I think I've got this one all done, so I'll show you this one first. So, okay, so we've got a magnet underneath this. I'll show you how to do it on the other side. Lift that up, and we've got the other side of that magnet, and then these open up, and then I've got the beautiful, like, fairy village pattern. And then here is that fern again, a little bit darker fern. And then the whole thing opens up. Okay, and I've got, I've used some of the borders with one of the big journaling cards. And then just white here, I think I might put one of the cut aparts in here. And then the bucket. Okay, so that is that. And now we'll work on the other side. So over here, I'm going to put, um, I've got both of these uh, cut out and backed on black cardstock. So I'm gonna have the golden fountain sit right here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of um, wet adhesive on this. Okay, I'm gonna kind of lift this up and put this down here. And now I don't have this piece of paper on yet because I want to put a magnet there, right? So I'm going to lift this up here and put a magnet down there. So I'm going to put it kind of right in the center. Okay, so I'm going to put two magnets magnetized together on top of that little bit of score tape and then add just a bit more. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to shut that just to adhere that magnet in place. Okay, and now we will glue on the other half of this so the, that part's covered and the magnet's covered. I'm using wet adhesive and then I'm just going to clip it um, with a couple little clips from the dollar store here. You can just use save, or, um, uh, paper clips if you so desire. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that for a few minutes and we'll put this piece on. up and I think I've got all the other pieces oh I don't have this one on yet so we'll put this one on is it inked yes it is okay oh this one isn't on either Uh, so let me just show you the lid before we move forward. Uh, this was by far my favorite image, so I definitely had to use it um, for the top. I might do some a little bit of embellishing on the corners. I haven't decided how much I want to do on here. Maybe at least a couple butterflies. And then on the edges of the box, I just used that the blue kind of watercolor paper. On the inside, um, I have the house on the inside of the lid and then I also have it um, on the center of the box. I thought that just kind of worked really well and then the other parts, the other inside bits have that um, kind of purpley fern pattern. Okay, so let's just see if this is... I'm going to give this a couple more minutes to uh, finish setting because I really want it to be adhered before I start moving things around. Okay, so I'm going to give that a couple minutes and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all together. Okay, so that piece is all dry so we can close this up. Like that, like that, and now we can close it up entirely here. So grab three and then kind of bring it over this last one. Okay, and it is a tight fit just so you know. So like I, I wanted it to be, like I said, once everything's on there, it's a nice snug fit. You can even turn it upside down and the lid won't come off until you want it to come off. All right, so there it is. There is our gorgeous explosion box. And then I'll just explode it once for you. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> All right, so I hope that you loved this project and I hope that you will give it a try. And uh, yeah, go check out uh, Victoria Designs and their beautiful paper packs and um, I hope that you'll also check out some of my other tutorials and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Alright, sending you huge hugs, love you all, and I will see you again very soon. Bye!